Welcome to the Raising Boys and Girls podcast. I'm Sissy Goff. I'm David Thomas. And I'm Melissa Trevathan. And we're so glad you've set aside a few minutes to spend with us today. In each episode of this podcast, we'll share some of what we're learning in the work we do with kids and families on a daily basis at Daystar Counseling in Nashville, Tennessee. Our goal is to help you care for the kids in your life with a little more understanding, a little more practical help, and a whole lot of hope. So pull up a chair and join us on this journey from our little yellow house to yours. The Raising Boys and Girls podcast is brought to you in partnership with Minnow. Minnow provides meaningful screen time and shared experiences for families to help you grow in your faith together. Check them out at podcast.gominnow.com. That's podcast.gominnow.com. We are here for a brand new season of the podcast. Woohoo! So fun to be back here with you two. So glad to be here. And we are calling this season Modern Parents Vintage Values, which is the title of an amazing book the two of you wrote years ago, and excited to dive into a lot of the themes of that book. And when the three of us would teach on this book, teach a class called Modern Parents Vintage Values, we used to Here start... Here we go. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Free. We can disregard this next statement. Well, you're going to maybe love where I'm headed oh, now. Okay, we sorry. used to joke that Melissa was going to bring the vintage to that class, and we were going to bring the modern, and that's just not, not true anymore, anymore at all. The more gray hair we have. Yeah. We're so, a vintage right there with And you, I'm Melissa. looking at them both right now across the way, and they do have some gray hair. It's great. Mine's mostly covered over. <laughs> if I do, it's a problem. <laughs> we are bringing the vintage. We are bringing some vintage, mm-hmm. yeah. But it is still very fun to sit and talk about this idea, and I think especially the modern world of today. I mean, things just, even in the last couple of years, have changed so much. But thinking collectively about the three of us. So, Melissa, what year did you start working with kids, would you say? Well, I was 16. Right. What year would mm, 60s? In the 60s. 65, 64. David, what year did you start working with kids? I started working with kids when I was in college, but I started working at Daystar in 97. Yeah, me too. I started in college, but Daystar in 93. So we all have, I don't know how many years, we're all too old to do the math, but (laughs) it's been a few years collectively. So I would be curious, I'll just interview y'all like we do, some of our guests. I would be curious what you would say is different in kids today versus 60s, mid-90s. What stands out to you? I'm not sure if this is going to have any bearing on what I'm going to talk to, but I thought it was so funny this morning. Paul Duncan, who is a songwriter out in California, I talked to him and said, asked him if I could use this. He said his two-year-old wrote a song, made up a song this morning, and the song was entitled, I'm a Princess Who Cares About You. <laughs> or he said, it could be, I'm a Princess Who Cares About You. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, That's so good. <laughs> uh, and I think some of that is what has changed is for Ages, and I think when we started off, every little girl came in and was a princess. I think that we still have the princess, but I also think that kids can tend to be more in charge and even more victims, too, and that things tend to center around them. Before the pandemic, it was a sense of entitlement of I deserve more and more, and a sense of demandingness that's there with it, and that things just really revolved around them, and things were just going so fast. And then when we went into the pandemic, the first thing that I began to be concerned about was seeing and hearing so many parents feel so sorry for their kids, their school experience, they were missing the prom, their social interactions, and it's all true, and it was an It's very sad of what they had to go through. But I also thought that they were moving into a sense where the kids were becoming the victims and that they began to see themselves as not having any choices. And we immediately at Daystar started talking about, uh, hey, how can we help? How can we help with this? And so we started developing what we called a daily dose of Daystar. And we said on this, it's stopping the spread of fear, anxiety, discouragement, boredom, and starting the spread of kids with a purpose. 
And so uh, all of what I'm trying to say is having kids with a purpose and not just being so so centered on themselves. So I think that's some of the difference right now that kids have lost their sense of purpose and impact and how they affect others, that that's different right now. That's so good. I love that. Yes. I do too. I'll talk about my work with boys, then you talk about what's different with girls. Mm. Um, I'd be curious to see. But when I think back to when I started technology was barely a thing at that point, 25 years ago in the way it is now. And I would have a handful of conversations with parents along the way, but not like it looks now. I mean, there's not just a day that goes by. There's barely an hour that goes by that I'm not having a conversation about a boy who feels, you know, obsessed with his gaming system or addicted to his smartphone. You know, I'm hearing those kind of phrases out of parents' mouth with so much regularity and the pull of that. You know, I talk so much about how boys are visually wired creatures, and I think they just are so drawn in. Not that girls aren't drawn in by that experience. They certainly are. But I think that difference feels significant. And even the panic that I experience, that all three of us experience when we talk with parents, you know, just the urgency I think they feel around. I'm so worried about my kids' relationship with technology. So what about girls? Well, I, you know, I think there are a lot of changes in the world of girls, but the thing probably that stands out the most is like when I think about counseling in 1993, the thing that I loved the most was probably just helping kids learn to talk about their feelings, like express what was inside of them because I don't feel like they knew how back then. Now I'd like to get them to stop talking about their feelings. (laughs) That's terrible (laughs) as a counselor. Not really, but kind of. Kids want their words to have impact. And so We talk about this so often that, you know, when we were growing up, I think really all three of us in different seasons, if we wanted to have impact with our parents, the thing that we would say that had the most bang was, I'm going to run away. And Mm -hmm. we haven't heard a child say that. I think all of us would say in a decade, we haven't heard a kid say that. And now they say, I want to kill myself. And, (sighs) And that we're having kids as young as eight who are saying that. And we talk about this too, but I don't have girls who say, I'm worried. I have girls who come in and it's like they Googled the diagnostic criteria for anxiety and they say, I have anxiety. Or kids don't say, I'm sad. They say, I'm depressed. (laughs) Google is so great for so many reasons, but it is not (laughs) in some ways for mental health for kids because I think they really are Googling what is PTSD. What are, I mean, they come in diagnosing themselves with initials I've never heard of in my life because I think. Part of the nature of kids is that they do have big feelings. Now they know how to talk about them, which honestly, that part of it is great that they're learning better how to put words to the emotions that are inside of them. But they've lost this ability to have perspective in the midst of it. And I would imagine it ties in actually to screens and to so much self-focus. And I think we've in part done that to them and obviously Raising Boys and Girls is a podcast where we are three therapists who want kids to talk about their feelings, but we can overattend, and we've talked about that, and we will talk about that in this season. And so helping kids learn to say, I feel sad, I feel worried, and to not have to go to 10 every time feels like I think one of the things I want the most for us to help parents help kids with this season, and girls in particular, I think, struggle with that. I love that. It is more of a, a sense of being able to be where they are. Yes. And not where they pretend to be. And I think they've genuinely, I mean, I remember a group of high school girls saying, no one would listen to you if you said you were stressed. And so I think they feel like they have to have the big word and even now have to have a label. Mm-hmm. So yeah, to back up off of that and say, let's use the right words that are really important words that are true. The Raising Boys and Girls podcast is brought to you in partnership with Minna. Did you know that Minnow has an award-winning children's Bible? Written by VeggieTales creator Phil Vischer, the Minnow Laugh and Grow Bible for Kids is more than a children's Bible storybook. It's a deep, engaging, and whimsical gospel experience. Each Bible story is vividly illustrated, takes just minutes to read, and includes a family connection to encourage readers to learn, talk, and pray together. Find out more at shop.gominnow.com. That's shop.gominno.com. 
so that's kids. How, what about parents? And let me preface it to say, one of my favorite things I've heard someone say that I thought was so fascinating recently, I was on a podcast, and the podcast host said, I realized recently that we used to call it child rearing, and now we call it parenting. Hmm. So I thought wow. it was fascinating that it has shifted maybe from becoming about them to becoming about the grownups. Hmm which is, has its advantages and disadvantages, sure. which I think is what we would say about the shift in time. So what would y'all say? What do you think are different in parents today? Well, I would say they're younger, <laughs> which is another way of saying I'm older. <laughs> but they do seem to be very, very young. And that and, means you have so much wisdom. To <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you, thank you. I think the difference, of, and I think parents would even say this as they look back and when they were growing up, they're just busier just busy, 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 and going from one thing to the next, and all good choices, things that they're doing, but so busy, and many times in a hurry, that they're exhausted. And with that exhaustion, I think then they become unaware. Mm. And I think that uh, even when they are aware, and they're listening and reading and have all these endless resources, they can become obsessed with the resources that are there. So... I don't know if we've shared this story or not, but it's one that stays with me so much of how I feel like parenting is different right now. It's when I picture being out on a boat, which we do a lot here at Day Starts, a big part of counseling, and <laughs> uh, we're out on the boat, many times teaching a child who used to be skiing, can be any number of water sports. And one of the things that we would watch and see and experience is someone in the boat helping them learn how to ski by shouting out, keep your skis together, keep your knees bent, let the boat pull you. I always love that one. Let the boat pull you and just shouting out to them, which is overwhelming when you're out there. If you've ever mm. skied, water skied before, and your skis are going all over mm. the place. I had so many sobbing memories in the uh -huh. water yeah. as yeah. a kid. Yeah. Yes. I can't do all those things. <laughs> and you were how old when you learned to ski? Six. Uh, hmm. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, this, that's what I picture parents doing a lot, is being in the boat with good hearts, giving out great instructions, and the child feeling many times out there helpless, even maybe judged. And that is a real fear I think kids have, of having a sense of judgment. And what we would say so often at the lake in the summer is, if you're going to teach someone to ski, you get in the water with them. You get in the water with them, and you help them, and you encourage them. And even if they don't get up, it's okay. You still encourage them that we want parents, and we want to be focused on not only helping, telling kids how to succeed, but teach them how to fail mm -hmm. and how they go through that and through the pain. And so that's a way of feeling like we're busy and parents are rushed, and they're trying really hard to communicate to the kids from the boat. And kids are having a hard time and need them to be up close. Mm, I love that, Melissa. It's a great picture. I would say my response to that might be, I was thinking actually when you used the word over-attending a few minutes ago, mm. I would say that's maybe the biggest difference that I see. And I think about how often the three of us sit down with parents who would say, I grew up in a home where it was my way or the highway. You know, I didn't have a voice. I didn't have an opinion. I wasn't really heard. We didn't talk about feelings. And I think the tendency for any one of us out of our experience is sometimes to swing the opposite direction. And mm -hmm. we're probably seeing a lot of that in keeping with what you said about you know, feelings early on where on the one hand, I'm so excited we are equipping kids with a strong developed emotional vocabulary and we're paying attention to mental health in ways we haven't, helping kids be well-versed in that space and maybe at times ending there, starting there and ending there. And mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite things about the way you break down Raising Worry-Free Girls is it's understanding, help, and hope. And I think sometimes what happens if you grew up in a my way or the highway, you didn't have a voice and 
you're so committed to your kids having a voice, sometimes it stops at just the understanding and we don't move toward help. We don't yeah. help kids figure out how to take the emotion to something constructive. Yeah. And Practical. we don't mm-hmm. exactly, mm-hmm. and we don't even sometimes say, you know what? We've talked long enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And now it's time to be done with the conversation. Mm-hmm. Helping kids take steps forward, I think that isn't as instinctive. And where a good amount of listening is so needed and helpful too much listening, you know, it's like most everything in life. (laughs) Too much of anything can stop being a good thing. That is so true, isn't it? It's a balance Mm. of uh, too much of anything is just not a good thing. Mm. Yeah. What would you say? Well, I think it's part of that balance because I think about my first few years and right about the time we wrote Modern Parents, I can still picture this mom sitting across from me and she brought her daughter in because she had snuck the family credit card, and she had spent $5,000. And this was probably 99 or something, 98. Spent $5,000, didn't ask her mom's permission. So her mom was telling me the story, talking about how entitled her daughter was, and she was furious. And I said, what did you do in terms of consequences? And she said, I brought her here to you. <laughs> uh-oh, something's off. I, I don't think I'm the consequence. <laughs> But I, that's something I haven't heard parents say in a long time either. And mm-hmm. I think the flip side of overattending mm-hmm. are really what's underneath overattending. And you all know this. If you have encountered the three of us in any way, my hope is that you've encountered a whole lot of grace. And yes, we're overattending. Yes, we're busy and shouting from the boat. All of those things. But yes. it's because you're trying so, so hard. hard. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think we have never encountered as many intentional, thoughtful, wanting to get it right parents as we are encountering these days. And that's the hope in it and the excitement for us because it feels like your heart's there. It's just a matter of, okay, so let's talk through what can we do? How can we help kids today? And that's even what makes us so excited that you're joining us in a new season. Okay, so last question. If we were thinking about a modern world and all that kids are facing today, what do we feel like are three things that kids need now? This sounds like it's such a dry word, but responsibility. Mm. But that can come in different ways. I mean, responsibility at home, obviously things that they're in charge of. And it doesn't have to be angry or intense. It can be they get to or the music is on and they're enjoying taking care of putting the dishes in the dishwasher. So I think responsibility, but also just thinking about listening to a story yesterday of two boys that were sitting on the dock and they were talking about how they wanted to be better big brothers. They wanted to do well in their life because they felt responsible for their little brothers. And I love that. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what we're wanting to give the kids is you do make a difference. And that responsibility is one thing that I would say, small things, big things. Mm. Okay. Great. I would add to responsibility regulation. Ooh, Mm. good. And I think, you know, it's part of why the three of us wrote Are My Kids on Track? And it felt so important to talk about perspective and resourcefulness, those two emotional milestones that have so much to do with regulation, where Mm. we are seeing kids struggle more than ever. But I think even back to me talking about the strong difference of technology being in the mix, I think that, in my mind, has trained kids against regulation. Yeah. Like yes. I think, so true. you know, whether it's I no longer have to sit in the pediatrician's office waiting until my name's called, you know, figuring out how to <laughs> navigate the boredom because I've got a device in my hands at all time to entertain me or yeah. even just, you know, with the rise of social media too, that kids can now text, tweet, post their every thought, their every feeling in any given moment and, and are really invited into that is in essence training against regulation. Mm -hmm. It's like training you say everything you're thinking and feeling in real time when all three of us know like, actually sometimes it's great just not to say whatever you're thinking. Hold on to that, sit on that, Mm -hmm. contemplate that. So I would say regulation. What would you say? I'm thinking primarily about girls, but you might even say this is true about boys too, but I would say confidence. And screens are probably at war with that too. I think we have never been so much about culturally talking about empowering girls, and I have never felt as little trickle down in my office of that confidence actually impacting them. And obviously, we know 
girls are leading the statistics on anxiety twice as likely. And I think anxiety isn't just a lack of confidence, but a lack of belief that they're capable. And in all those anxiety books, the definition I came up with is anxiety is an overestimation of the problem and an underestimation of themselves and herself in particular. And so to help girls find their way to confidence today and in light of technology and in light of the emotions and all the things that we're talking about feels different and it feels really, really important. I love that we're going to be talking about all those things this season. And I was looking at our topics. I mean, we're talking about confidence. We're talking about emotions, including regulation. We're talking about gratitude, responsibility, entitlement, respect, so many good things. And we've got some amazing guests coming up too. We've got spiritual moments with Melissa that we always love and just so grateful to be on this journey with you and that you'd invite us into your homes and cars and walks and wherever you listen to our podcast. So thanks for letting us be a part of your parenting journey. The Raising Boys and Girls podcast is brought to you in partnership with Minnow. Minnow helps you make screen time meaningful for your family, which shows kids love and values parents trust. Check them out at podcast.gominnow.com. That's podcast.g-o-m-i-n-n-o.com. It's our joy to bring the experience and insight we gain through our work beyond the walls of the Daystar House. Join us next time for more help and hope as you continue your journey of raising boys and girls.